So yesterday, Chris Paul tweeted, thank you to Phoenix, all the fans on a great season, back to work, and then what has become his slogan, can't give up now. Zach, it is the time of year where we decode everything and treat Twitter as if it is the code book of I don't know what. Does this basically mean CP3 is coming back to the Suns though? Is that how we should read this? Yeah, when do we start tracking private planes again? Let's do let's start oh. doing that again. <laughs> uh, I look, I think it's by far the most likely scenario and it's just the mechanics of does he opt in and extend or does he opt out to a lower number to help their tax situation? But I'd be surprised if Chris were on another team next year. I, look, I agree. I'd be surprised I, yeah. if he opted out for a lower number. He fought for that higher number, and as the president of the Players Association, it's kind of important that yes, players like, that age can have that number, right? But he he lucked out. He lucked out two times. They kind of I don't want to say sent him to die, but they sent him to a place that, that they didn't lucky? think. But they didn't think that they didn't think that he was going to be as good as he was, and the teams weren't going to be as great. So I think he doesn't want to keep trying that formula. <laughs> What was it? Did I say something crazy? Or our senior NBA insider, Adrian Wojnarowski. Welcome back, Woj. Rach, great to be here with you. Happy draft week. Exactly. And let's start with the draft. A couple of days ago, you tweeted that the Pistons were not, quote, fully there yet on Cade Cunningham with that number one pick. Has anything changed now that we're getting in on draft day? Uh, Rachel, perhaps closer, but still not there and ready uh, as of this hour, to give a commitment to Kate Cunningham that he will be the number one overall pick. And uh, listen, I still think that the Pistons are going to get there uh, before Thursday night. Uh, but listen, this is a unique draft. And there are three players at the top of the draft who in another year, uh, maybe even last year, would all be number one overall picks. I think Troy Weaver, uh, the Pistons GM, and, and that staff just wants to keep talking through it, evaluating it. Um, you know, I, I don't think it's any hesitancy they have with Cade Cunningham. I, I think it's really just about how good they think uh, Evan Mobley and Jalen Green are. Yeah, it's funny. I just left Jalen Green. We're having a conversation about that. He said, I think I should be number one, which, of course, a lot of kids think as they <laughs> enter the draft. But I said, did yeah. you tell the Pistons that? He said, absolutely. So he gave them something <laughs> to think about there. Are you hearing any trade whispers or teams that are particularly interested in moving up or down as we approach the draft here? Well, there are a lot of conversations, Rachel, about uh, teams who you know certainly would like to get in that top 10. This is a tough top 10 to get into. You're going to have to give up a lot. And I think uh, you know we saw the trade uh, with Memphis getting that 10 spot. Certainly a lot of teams knocking on the door with Sacramento at number nine. Uh, but... I think really the big trade talk over the next couple days is going to continue to be centered around Ben Simmons and Philadelphia, uh, Daryl Morey and Elton Brand and their front office. They've been canvassing the league uh, to see what they can get for Ben Simmons. And they're asking for a lot, almost a Harden-esque type package hey. of all-star player draft picks, uh, pick swaps, now start. And this is a player, remember, who has four years left on his deal. They don't have to do a trade by the draft or by the start of next season, certainly, right. but they're motivated to find a deal out there and, and they continue to talk to teams. I don't get the sense, though, that they're close to anything, that there's anything imminent, that they have a team yet that's ready to unload the kind of assets they would like to get at this point for Ben Simmons. So interesting. I think that will be a story for us this week, next week with free agency, all through the offseason. I do want to get back to that trade you already reported. You just referred to it. Jonas Valanciunas heading to New Orleans. Stephen Adam and, and Eric Bledsoe heading to Memphis. The Grizzlies also split up to the 10th pick in the draft as part of that deal. And are you hearing anything about the Grizzlies in particular trying to move up even higher then? I, I certainly think the Grizzlies have the assets now to move up again if there's a player uh, that they target. But how far is it worth giving up future picks? Uh, how many spots is that worth getting up in the draft? I don't think they're going to get much higher than 10th. And I think being in that top 10 allows Memphis uh, to get a player they really like there. And someone's going to drop to them at 10 that perhaps they're not expecting to drop today. Uh, New Orleans paid a steep price to get those contracts off, to get some cost certainty. Now heading into hmm. free agency, you know, that Lakers pick next season that Memphis gets in a deal. And of course, going from 17 to 10, you know, Memphis has potentially three first round picks and next year's draft and obviously a chance here to get a really good piece at number 10. And this is obviously a team that's already gotten in the playoffs 
Uh, you know, we, we've seen that young core. You'll have Jaron Jackson Jr. back for the entire season next year. Uh, Memphis is really set up nicely now for the future. And New Orleans, they've got cap space now to go out and get involved with Kyle Lowry, perhaps a Spencer Dinwiddie. And if those things don't work out, they can now match an offer sheet or re-sign Lonzo Ball uh, to a deal. Uh, so they've got the ability to, to kind of shore up that guard position and, and perhaps even get uh, maybe more of an established older point guard in there, which I know David Griffin's wanted to do uh, to kind of uh, anchor that team. And it's interesting on the Memphis side, too, when you talk about adding draft picks to their core, I mean, not only did they draft well in getting John Morant and Jaron Jackson Jr., the fact that those guys developed into stars early makes whoever they bring in now, they're all on the same timeline, really, which is incredible and not a position yeah. some of the other teams around the league are on. I do want to get to a non-draft item, though, because earlier today you reported Nets assistant coach Mike D'Antoni is leaving the organization. Is he retiring? Is he planning on pursuing another head coach opportunity? Why is he leaving Brooklyn now? Yeah, definitely not retiring, Rachel. Uh, you know, he came in and helped Steve Nash, uh, who certainly he's had a long relationship with, and helped mm -hmm. him through that first season as a head coach. And uh, Mike D'Antoni was a finalist in Portland for that head coaching job, I'm told. He'd like to be a head coach again, uh, but I don't think he wants to do the day-to-day -day grind of being an assistant again next season if there's perhaps another uh, role in the league somewhere else that isn't that day-to-day full-time uh, assistant job perhaps that might appeal to him obviously the head coaching hiring cycle now is over for next year yeah it's so fascinating watching him and steve this past season steve talking to us so much Woj, as you know about how valuable having mike there was especially when they had the transition with james harden coming in i know that organization wishes him well thank you so much for joining us we will see a lot of you in the next 24 hours i can't wait thanks rach see you soon he could opt in for one more year just sort of kick the can down the road or he could potentially sign an extension Chris, you have been in this situation yourself. What do you expect Kawhi to do? Do you think that he'll remain with the Clippers in one of those variations? Yeah, I, I think they should run it back. Um, you can arguably look at this last season, and, and I'm sure Kawhi can say, man, we could have won an NBA championship if I don't go down. Um, you, you know, they weren't 100% playing the Phoenix Suns. And, you know, you can potentially say that they could match up better with the Bucks in that final series. But him kind of not being able to finish the season and still them having the success that they had, you know, with playoff P, mm -hmm. um, yep. uh, making sure that he's earned, doing what he needs to do. Now. Earned, rightfully earned. He came and he showed up and I think they all put on display why Kawhi should return. They've got a great coaching staff. Um, they've got great pieces. I think they can make a couple of more moves, maybe be even be active in the trade market a little bit. But you definitely want to run it back if they're, they're if you're in that position. It's not easy uh, to be a top four team in the West. Mm -hmm. And if you're on a top four team, I think you should stay put. I think you should retool it. And I think, um, you know, they'll have a chance to be one of the best teams in the NBA and compete for a championship next year with a healthy Kawhi. Hmm. Rach, I'm with Chris. Because if you're that close to a title, mm -hmm. if you feel that comfortable about being at home, mm -hmm. why would you not just stay, rehab, and then come back if you can at the end of the year? And if you can't, you give yourself a whole stretch of, of being with the staff that, uh, you know, you, you've developed at least some kind of comfort level with and you've got your own people that can take a look at you whenever you want. Uh, if I'm Kawhi, I take, uh, I take that one more year. I see where I'm at a year from now. And if I can come back with a group that I know is that close to a title, mm -hmm. I'm giving them a chance. It's so hard because we just don't know how long he's going to be out. This injury has been a little mysterious the whole time. It was labeled a sprain or a strain, and then it was upgraded to say a partial tear. I don't know how much is a partial tear. Is it like 98% or is it 9%? We don't know what got repaired. We do know it requires surgery. And this is the kind of injury that could have him out for most of next season and then not rejoin the team until the playoffs or maybe even sit out the whole year. It's just unpredictable. And we've seen that with Kawhi Leonard and his health, which then again makes you think maybe he will opt out, but re-sign so he can have that security going forward. I do think we learned with Kevin Durant, though, a player who is of that caliber, no matter whether he's injured or not, people will want to sign him. They, they have some faith that he will get